The color panel is another way to select and use color. It can be launched via the window menu by choosing the color option. Color is adjusted via sliders. It has a variety of settings and display options to choose from. The sliders can be set to CMYK, RGB, grayscale, etc. And you can see that on the screenshots here. Um, the first panel here is in RGB mode and so you're sliding red, green, and blue wavelengths of light to produce various colors. And on the CMYK sliders, you are sliding CMYK uh, representations of ink, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to produce other colors. The color panel can also be used to copy hex codes for web colors if you're developing code for a website, or even to display web, web safe colors to ensure that a color can be used on the internet without having any issues. And you can see that in the last uh, screenshot over here. Um, it's taken what would normally be a gradient of color and have thousands if not millions of colors to choose from and it's broken them down into just a handful of colors within that wavelength for you to be able to use. The swatches panel allows Photoshop users the ability to choose and save colors for future use. It can also be used to select colors from a color library like the Pantone matching system. It can be opened via the window menu by choosing the swatches option towards the bottom. Swatches can be viewed in either thumbnail or list mode, and you can see that on the screen here. The biggest benefit of using swatches is to reuse color. Photoshop users can easily choose the same exact shade of blue every single time they need it by selecting the associated color swatch from the swatches panel. If you don't use swatches, you have to literally guess which color you used in the past and hope it's the same color, or you have to write down the percentages or values for the CMYK RGB image and then enter them every single time. For example, you might write down that the color you want to use is 10% cyan, 24% magenta, 7% yellow, and 3% black. And every time you want to use it, you'd have to manually enter those values into the color picker that we talked about in the previous videos. Use the options fly out menu on the swatches panel to create new swatches, change the panel view mode, or open new color libraries. The options fly out menu is a little icon in the top right corner of the panel with four horizontal lines on it. The fly out menu expands the capabilities of whatever panel you're working with. It is on virtually every panel and every Adobe software application, and so it's my recommendation that when in doubt, just click on it and see what's available. And so when you look at the swatches panel here, you can see that there's a bunch of little squares. Um, but if you hit that option fly out menu, you can see there's so many more options. And you may not even know what they do, but it, at least it gives you the ability to see that they exist. And maybe you can then look into it to learn more about the program you're working with. It should be noted, new color swatches are automatically generated from the foreground color on the swatches panel. So if you'd like to create a new color swatch via the option fly out menu on the swatches panel, you should first set your foreground color to whatever color you would like to add. Color libraries like the Pantone matching system can be used to add process blend or spot colors. Process blend colors are made from red, green, and blue or CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. When a color is referred to as being a process or blend color, it means a few limited colors like the red, green, and blue for RGB color mode or the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for CMYK color mode can be used to create thousands if not millions of other colors for display devices and printed outputs. Spot colors are literal colors. Instead of making a grass green color from some combination of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which would be an illusion of the green color because you never actually have green, you just have an overlaying of cyan and yellow that creates the illusion of green, a printer would use actual green ink. You may choose to print using spot colors to ensure color consistency. For example, if you print with actual green ink, the color printed will always be the same consistent shade of green. There's no way it could be any other color because the ink is literally the color that you want to print with. If you make that color from some combination of cyan and yellow, the color can vary throughout the press run. For example, if you run out of yellow throughout the press run, the color might end up being more blue than green because the yellow is falling out of of the, the printing press. Spot colors should only be used when preparing images for printing processes capable of using spot color ink. There is never a reason to use a spot color when preparing images for digital outputs. Every image seen on screen is always displayed in some form of red, green, and blue wavelengths of light. There is no way to use a spot wavelength of light. There's no way to tell your computer to show you a purple wavelength. 
They can only make purple by using some combination of a red, green, and blue wavelength of light to produce the purple color.